the slip joint, it's a mortise and tenon joint, and there's a couple of different ways you can lay out thirds. We can either sit uh, with a, a square of some sort and set it at one quarter, and we can mark out a quarter each way, leaving a quarter in the middle. Uh, you can take a pair of dividers, or you can set a, um, a set of scribes here for a quarter inch, and we can make a pass on this side, make a pass on this side, and hopefully our dividers are set for a quarter. Or, if you can, you can purchase a mortise and gauge, we already have a mortise and gauge. You can set it up so that we can make both scribes at the same time with one pass. Now I'm going to have to take my marking gauge that I had set for an inch and a half, and since I'm going to be cheeking it, I need to do the cross grain here. And I'll add my pencil line to it. And then this here, we're going to be doing the face. Now, I'm, my pencil line wasn't all that well. I'm going to take a square. I'm going to fix my lines here a little bit. It's okay to keep making things brighter for yourself to see. As we get older, we all have our problems with our vision. But it does help to use a marking knife and then follow it with a nice sharp pencil lightly. And the reason I'm only marking the ends here is because I'm going to be cutting a mortise. Now I leave this gauge set for an inch and a half. I've just set it off to the side. Um, you'll notice as you start getting more and more into this, your shop's going to be developing multiples of tools. Uh, and marking gauges is not the worst thing you can have multiples of. I'm going to mark my mortise. Now this gauge is marking two lines at a time. It'll be a little clearer here when I highlight them with a, with a pencil. Now this becomes my waist. So my saw cuts want to occur inside these two lines. When I get done, in great theory, there should be half a pencil line there when I get done with my cut. Now I'm going to do the same markings All right, now this becomes waste. All right, I am going to score just the boundary of my of my tenon. And I like to follow up I don't like putting pencil lines all the way across the tenons because it tends sometimes to confuse us and we get excited sawing and we tend to make a lot of cuts and there is the cabinet maker out there won't tell you that he's cut off a tenon before So we've got our layout. This is our mortise because we have stock on each side. We're going to cut this off and this is going to be our tenon. Now you can take it on a miter box and do some cuts, but I tend to freehand these more. Now when you start your cut, I tend to put a little bit of an angle away from me. 
That way your saw has a cutting advantage against the grain. You want to start sawing at this point to where you're looking down this line and down this line in the back at the same time. You don't have to worry about the back side. If you've got these two planes meeting against the saw, it'll come out the back just fine. Now once you get your saw cut started, you can square your stock up in the vise so that your the bottom of your mortise is flat. And I tend to start on one side, check the other. Make one pass, maybe half a pass will get us. tenant out of here. We're going to put a set of bench dogs in the bench here that we have just to give it a little bit of, of pressure. Now when you start your first chisel you want to stay back from the finish line. You want to tip your chisel out. Bevel wants to be toward the waist. We're going to knock out a little bit of here. I'll do it again. And then I'm going to take a clean cut. I'll do this without, just like you were going to use a butt chisel. Don't need any more pressure. Turn this over. Uh, it was taught to me by my master that a master is not a person who doesn't make mistakes. A master is a person who knows how to deal with their mistakes. If you look here real close, uh, the, with my lighting and my eyes here, I've got a little bit of an undercut in my mortise. Now I can try to pare this out in order to square this mortise up, but this is a pretty thin space to work in. It's actually easier to adjust my tenon. So I have this tenon fielded out here to do the cut, and normally I would cut the shoulders of the tenon first, but because if I do that, it gives me a, a determined width. Now, if I cut this over or cut it narrower, it's easier to now, I'll go ahead and cut down the length of the tenon first. And what I'll do is instead of cutting on the line, I'm going to cut a little bit inside the line because I have a little bit of a narrow mortise here. So we're going to start with that. Now, if you had... If you had done it the other way, in other words, your mortise had been cut too thick, well then you want to make sure you leave both your lines so you have room to pair them at a later date here. I'm going to go ahead and start my first cut. Make sure you want to cut on the waist side of the line. Now we want to be careful to, uh, to make sure that we're cutting on the, on the waist side here. I need to get a pretty good angle here. Make sure you stop just short of your where the cheek bottoms out. Your saw cut coming on the cheek will finish that out. You don't want to cut too far.
Now I'm using a cutoff block. Um, got a three inch stop on it, just a bench hook. Just a simple couple pieces of scrap wood tacked to the bottom and you want to square it up. This one has a trough cut into it to cut small pieces, but you want to line up your line in line with the edge of the board there so you get a nice square cut. And then we're going to be real, our first few strokes need to be nice and clean. cut. Flip it over and do the other side here. You want to take nice even pull strokes and, or push strokes. You don't want to put a lot of pressure into it, especially on a soft wood like poplar. If your saw is nice and sharp, uh, one too many strokes and you'll be into the tenon and once you cut into the tenon you weaken the entire joint. This one here, we're going to cut a little bit deeper. All right. Now, before we tune it up, let's give it a dry fit here. Now, make sure you pay attention to your joints. You don't want to accidentally flip it the wrong way to fit it. And as it turns out, my tenon is pretty thick here. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up. Our, uh, we're going to clean up our shoulders a little bit and I'm going to do that real quick by just paring it down I can't stress the importance of a sharp chisel still pretty tight. Now we can keep paring on it with a chisel, but the trouble we have is finding a plane to work off of. I can put a piece of wood against it and work off it that way, but sometimes I like to use a, a, a regular file or a rasp. Um, we'll take a, just a regular a file, it's not too aggressive, and we're just going to give ourselves, we have much more ability to hit a flat plane using a long flat file than trying to work with a chisel here because my adjustment's going to be pretty minute. If I had a lot to take off, I would switch to a rasp. But you want to be careful that you're watching your lines so you keep yourself flat to the fit. Still a little tight. You don't want to force the joint too much or you're going to split your cheeks out right here of your mortise. So we're going to adjust this tenon just a little bit more. Now one way you can check is your tenon is going to fit like this. You can flip your tenon around and what you're looking for is whether or not the cheek of the tenon is the same thickness as your, as your mortise. All right, and we're going to check the other side with that. And there's the offending side right there. All right, the way I did that again is you have to be pulled apart and you want to flip the cheeks that are going to touch. Let's do, that, let's do that right this time. Yep, cheeks that fit touch like this. You can take a look at how it fits. I flip it to the other side. You guys can see the variance there in my tenon. So we know which side we're going to take it off here. <clears throat> let's be a little quicker and a little more aggressive here real quick. We need to take and add just a little bit of depth to our mortise here. Take the bench hook out of the picture there if we don't mind. Get this right. Okay. We 
also have a problem here where we're a little bit shy. Our tenon's a little bit shallow right here. So you remove a little bit of your shoulder to get that to where it comes in. We got a couple different ways we can do that. We can either take a chisel and work on it a little bit. It's a pretty minor spot. Or we can use a rabbit plane to clean that off. This is one of my rabbit planes. It's an older style. You can get them in, in metal form. Uh, but it's designed to do exactly what I'm doing with it here. Now I'm going to use this bench hook in order to control the depth of my cut. And we want to take nice, quick, short strokes and always take one less cut than you think you need because we can't put the wood back. There we go. Nice, clean joint.